Hey, welcome back to the shop, guys. Um, we've recently been talking about vacuum gauges. Um, we demoed how to use a vacuum gauge, take some readings. So when you guys get out here in the lab, you guys can complete your vacuum testing task sheets. Um, I mentioned a little bit about map sensors, manifold absolute pressure the other day, and how we can use scan tools to monitor some of that stuff nowadays. So I just wanted to uh, give you a brief view today of some map sensor readings. So I'm not gonna go on right this second what all these values mean, different things like that. I'll touch on it, um, but I just wanna give you guys a general idea of what it's gonna look like and what some of the values are telling you a little bit, all right? So I just came out here to the shop. We're in our 2003 Chevy Tracker lab vehicle. It doesn't have any known mechanical issues. It idles good, it runs good. Um, so it's in pretty decent shape. So we should have some pretty normal vacuum readings as we saw with our vacuum gauge demo. Um, right now I just have the key on, engine off, and you'll notice right here we are looking at manifold absolute pressure, voltage, 4.90. This map sensor runs off of a five volt reference circuit. Um, when we get into engine performance class, I'll, you'll learn a little bit more about five volt reference circuits and, and, and different things like that. So. But this runs off of five volts, so it basically operates between you know zero and five volts. So right now the key is on, engine off. So we're pretty much reading atmospheric pressure inside that intake manifold. So you can see here it's reading almost the five volts, the four point nine. So take that into consideration when you see some of these other readings when I start this up. So right now engine off. There's no vacuum in the intake manifold right now currently. There is atmospheric pressure. So we're at a higher voltage. Over here, this breaks it down into your inches. A vacuum too, it's showing. Um, 28.9 right now. So that's kind of where we're at. We're basically reading barometric pressure right now with the key on engine off. All right, but I'm gonna come back over here and look at this because not every vehicle gives you this information, but you'll usually always find some sort of a voltage reading. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm gonna make this a little bigger for you guys. Put this one in a little bit of a graph. All right, we'll open it up like that for now. Let me start this thing up. <laughs> so as you can see, engine off, key on. There's no vacuum in the intake. We had a high voltage reading. Right now, we have the car running. We are at idle and you can see that the voltage has dropped to a lower voltage. We have a high vacuum situation right now. All right, so I also just felt this thing felt like it misfired a little bit there. So you might notice a little bit of variances right there. This is what you're gonna be using. I mean, this is, a, this is another form of monitoring engine vacuum. Your map sensor is gonna give you a lot of information. There's a lot more diagnostics you can do by looking at your map sensor. Um, I just wanted to touch base on some of the readings today. So key is when you're looking at this map sensor voltage, high vacuum, you're gonna see this lower voltage. Low vacuum or no vacuum, you're going to see a higher voltage. So remember we discussed that you're gonna have your highest vacuum readings at idle or steady cruise. Um, you're gonna have the lowest vacuum readings at wide open throttle. So watch what happens to our voltage readings when we go wide open throttle. Let me make this a little bigger for you guys. All right. I'm wide open throttle. And back off. And now it's back to a low voltage. Low vacuum. High vacuum. Nice thing about being able to graph this data is you can kind of see some variances or anything like this where we had a little bit of a, a hiccup back here um, when we first started it up. You can kind of see that. So there's some data that you guys can kind of put into your uh, mental database when you're looking at map sensor voltages. All right, hang tight. I'm going to post up something else here in a little bit on the Blazer and we're going to check out the readings on that so you have something to compare to. A good vehicle and a vehicle to problem. All right. Check back, warming out. All right, welcome back, guys. Got everything hooked up over here to the Blazer. I'm gonna show you a little bit more scan tool data on this. We talked about 
the data over here we saw on the manifold absolute pressure sensor on a no good mechanically good running vehicle. And now we have one that we know has some serious issues. Right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. We're using the all tell scan tool on this. I have I went through, built the car, had the data to save a little bit of time. I clicked both parameters, the map sensor voltage. We're working off of a five volt reference circuit again. So remember when it has low vacuum you'll see high voltage and vice versa all right i have this up here on kpa so we see kpa we can also change this one to psi so you'll see that when it's idling like this the vacuum's higher this voltage is a little bit lower the pressure is lower so what we're going to take a look at here and i have it on the graph too so we can see the graph as we do it remember when we look at this gauge here our vacuum is low in here because we have a problem. We're only at 13, 14 fluctuating back and forth. Um, so you can see that our readings are showing, they're corresponding a little bit here too. We have, obviously we're reading some vacuum, but we're not reading as high, or I should say as low of a voltage reading as we probably should. Um, it's always good to compare this to a known good vehicle. Um, so, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to snap throttle this so you guys can see your snap throttle vacuum test on here. All right. Let me try and get the vacuum gauge in here so you can kind of get a visual representation of the two and what's going on. So you can see it on the gauge. You can also see what the gauge is doing on that graph. Spikes up, shoots down, we get high vacuum situation when the throttle plate's closed, and then it levels back out. All right? Now, your readings on this one are going to be a little skewed because, like I said, we have a drivability problem. So low vacuum, so you can see how that corresponds in the voltage reading. All right? Check back in a little bit. Hey, Wartman back. Hey, a little bit more on some uh, map sensor readings. I'm going to give you another example here on, um, on a car with a performance camshaft. You'll see a little bit more fluctuation on your map sensor readings on this one as we did with our um, vacuum gauge. We had a little bit of a fluctuation with that. Um, and we also had a lower vacuum reading on you know, the vacuum gauge with the performance camshaft. It's kind of a side effect of the performance camshaft. So I'm gonna give you guys a example here on the scan tool and show you what kind of data we have on the map sensor on this 2006 GTO with a you know, pretty, you know, pretty wild, performance street cam that's in here it's not a, not the craziest camshaft in the world but um it's on the higher end of um a street car camshaft so we'll we'll take a look here and see what we have on the scan tool all right See if we can zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, I didn't like that. But as you can see, you see a little bit more fluctuations in your readings here. I have both map sensor parameters brought up like I did on the other vehicles. We have the voltage parameter and then the actual um, measurement of, of pressure. This one's using KPA. Um, we have PSI set on another one, KPA on one. So there's just some different examples, but I brought both of the same parameters up. As you can see here, the green line is map sensor KPA, the blue line is map sensor voltage. And this is just reading right out of the PCM data right now. So, but you can see here that this is a little more fluctuations. It looks very slight on here because of the scaling, um, but there are slight fluctuations as where when we do the chevy tracker earlier which is a completely stock no problem not modified not anything just a completely stock oem car it was a lot more flat right through there so just giving you an idea um hopefully that some of these readings when you guys see these you kind of take note of them can come back check the videos out later and i'm hoping that 
you know, it'll help you out down the road some more to kind of give you a starting point of what a few different vehicles would look like under certain circumstances. So let's do a quick little snap throttle here. It's harder on this vehicle to do as quick of a snap throttle because it's electronic throttle plate. I can't do it manually from the throttle plate, so I'm trying to do it with a pedal. There's a little, not much of a delay, but a slight delay with the electronic control. Let's do it one more time for you. So you're seeing the similarities in our vacuum gauge. Um, we have our, our spike up when we lose vacuum. So the voltage is going up because we're losing vacuum and starting to go into the pressure. Um, and then when the throttle plates close, it dips way down into the high vacuum range because it almost kind of chokes it out. Think of it kind of choking it out in a way it's creating a higher vacuum and those plates slam shut. And then it comes back up and levels out. All right, let's do a 2500 RPM test. And you'll see here, holding it, still had a little bit of, a little bit of movement here. And then right here, when I lit off, it went. The vacuum increased and then spiked back up because when we shut that when I lit off of the gas pedal shut that throttle plate and it quickly spiked the vacuum and went back up so hopefully these readings give you some ideas maybe a little bit better understanding of engine vacuum um, and manifold pressure manifold vacuum things like that all right so I'll get these edited put together send them out to you guys all right Wartman out